Well, hello and a very warm welcome. Thanks for tuning in to News 9 Live. India's space program from that little hamlet in Kerala. Today, India and its space program has taken quantum leaps. Uh, none to say uh, from a small church where a team of uh, scientists that did not even have instruments to carry out the right kind of scientific experiments. You can see the picture over there, how that, uh, you know, um, a portion of the rocket is being uh, put on the backside of a cycle and it was taken to the launching site. And from there, uh, that small church, that small fishing hamlet in Kerala, in Thiruvananthapuram, uh, the first launch took place and from there, uh, it seems like sky has not been the limit. Space is not the final. It's the next frontier. And India certainly hasn't really looked back. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're embarking on a space odyssey of our own. Today, even as we look ahead to the successful landing of Chandrayaan 3 and the myriad of possibilities it's going to open up for India, it's important that we look back as well. It's important that we look back, connect the dot in retrospect and take a trip down memory lane. Sarabhai, Jaymi, Baba, those stalwarts and big names that have done so much for India's space program. We're going to trickle down through the exact steps that, uh, you know, took us from what happened in that small little church in Kerala where uh, simple plain sheets of asbestos kept on two wooden piles would make up for a desk and uh, that itself was the first launching site and the lab as well to what we have today, ISRO. A reliable name, PSLV, a reliable name, our Chandrayaan missions, our Mars Orbiter, uh, you name it. Well, we've done it in half the budget and uh, with the right kind of technology that many in the world today can say has been absolutely spot on. But before we uh, you know, talk about all of that, our very esteemed set of guests with us on the show today. And uh, I'd of course love everybody to get down in the comment section because it's important that you become part of this cosmic journey as well. Uh, even as we're looking uh, towards uh, Chandrayaan 3, making that successful landing, India only becoming the fourth planet on this, uh, fourth country on this planet to successfully soft land on the dark side of the moon. Uh, help us with your opinions. If there's a story that you know, what's your moon story? Let us know in the comment section sections down below. Also, if you've got any questions, we've got panelists, experts with us uh, on the show today. Group Captain uh, V. N. Jha, Senior Scientist, Aerospace and Joint Director for the DRDO. Uh, always a pleasure to be speaking with you, sir. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. B. K. Tyagi, Scientist and Principal Scientific Officer, Vigyan Prasar, Government of India. He's also with us on the show. I'm going to quickly first go across to Group Captain V. N. Jha. Now, Group Captain, you and I have been talking about Chandrayaan for the longest time. Your commentary is so renowned in this particular space as well. But before we talk about the Mangalyan, before we talk about Chandrayaan 1, 2, 3, before we talk about the reliability of PSLV, let's take a trip back in memory lane. Let's take a trip down that little hamlet, that fishing hamlet in Kerala. What is your opinion? Throw some light on what it was like back in the day. The amount of, uh, you know, uh, steps we've taken so far in our uh, space odyssey, our space journey. What, would is, uh, what was it like back then? Um, you know, uh, Sarabhai um, and Jay Homi Baba with uh, peanuts to work with. And at a time when there was a cold war going on and a lack of funds and Sarabhai went on, took funds from the United States and the USSR, two dissenting sides amid a cold war to launch our first, uh, you know, uh, spectacle up in space. What was that like? And, um, you know, I mean, it, it has been so inspiring. Throw some light on that, sir. Well, Kabir, thank you very much for having me here. And I'm really pleased to be uh, with, along with your viewers, who will be interacting uh, with us today. You, you know, put us back to the memory lane, memory line, rather, I will call it, uh, where nostalgia also prevails. Hmm. I had visited first time uh, uh, the ISRO in Kerala. It was, uh, I was doing my post-graduation in 1982-83. That is the time I had visited uh, VSS, uh, uh, our, our ISRO research center there. And what I had seen it that time and what I see it today, you know, it's a sea of change. Hmm. Uh, but then, you know, uh, I belong to a generation where uh, people haven't seen the electricity, haven't seen the telephone, leave, around, uh, leave uh, uh, you know, the mobile out of it. And today, uh, those things are part of, essential part of our lives. Uh, we couldn't have thought of, uh, even during my special, 
that uh, the ISRO uh, through its satellite will be part of our daily life, whether it is telecommunication, whether it is television, whether it is distant education. Uh, and even the agriculture sector, mineralogy, uh, our sciences that is being uh, uh, explored today from the space, all this we couldn't have thought of. And everyone at that time felt that whatever a uh, little bit of money was being spent could be a waste. You know, just like today we are, uh, people are talking of why should uh, we spend so much of time, so much of, uh, uh, money on space. Look, hmm. the investment onto the science never, never, never goes waste. It always pays you dividend in some form or the other. And that is what we are seeing it today. Hmm. And for all your viewers, the entire Indian uh, nation, I will suggest that please don't question what work little bit of investment is being made onto the uh, space sector. It's the minimum. It's the minimum that a nation of 1.4 billion should be doing it. We should, in fact, invest more. It is never a waste. Every investment has got uh, two exponential uh, features of space sector. One is the verticals, another is the horizontal. The horizontal sector will yield you the commercial values mm, mm, of mm. all these investments, whether whatever form it is there, and the verticals will always add on to your technology. You know, this is something that is a feature of today, reality of today, and when you are asking with the memory lane. First time I remember, you know, uh, when we were born, we first knew that the Indian National Committee for the Space Research was part of TIFR in the DAE at that time. Thereafter, we had seen how U.S. also had helped India and the ISRO through, through the first uh, sounding rocket. Uh, it, it played a significant part. And then the journey started, how all the launches happened, all SLV's program happened. SLV-3 was a you know, major success that we mm. had seen. Mm. And, and then everything is the history. Today, ISRO is capable of launching almost about to the tune of uh, eight to nine tons of the payload, though it is not significant uh, when we compare with the world powers, but still, still, it is significant. We have to right. go. Uh, so, salute to ISRO, uh, salute to the dedication of the ISRO scientists. What hmm. we see hmm. today uh, happening on the lunar uh, orbit is all their prowess. And it will only uh, further uh, refine in the coming months and the years. Absolutely. And more than that, uh, Group Captain Jab, in, in the coming, uh, you know, couple of hours as well, because the countdown has begun. We're, uh, you know, looking at uh, uh, just a couple of hours uh, uh, before, uh, you know, it's not days or months anymore. It's just a couple of hours before we finally look at the successful uh, soft landing of Chandrayaan-3. Dr. B.K. Tyagi with us, uh, Principal Scientific Officer for Vigyan Prasar with us on the show as well. Sir, in your opinion, you know, the humble beginnings, would you like to throw some light on that as well? Because that's going to be our focus. Before we talk about all the Yans, Gaganyan, Mangalyan, Chandrayaan, let's talk about our humble beginnings. Uh, how inspiring are those? Uh, see, uh, uh, Dr. Jha has just explained the journey of ISRO. And now you can imagine when the time when we were just, uh, you know, thinking about the, doing a space and uh, understanding the, the, the atmosphere beyond the uh, space, beyond the atmosphere. Uh, that was the one time a, a humble beginning was made in uh, 70s with the, then uh, the uh, Arebata, Bhaskar, Rohini series and all that. Hmm. And now look at the, this was a time when the, the space race was already at its peak between Russia and uh, America and Russia was already, you know, into the space. They were already landed on the uh, moon itself. And we were, uh, you know, at that time we, uh, we were just thinking of that. And now look at the today's scenario. Now Russia want to compete with us. I, I'm not saying that it is hmm. a scientist. Hmm. I should not say, but there is an undercurrent to that. Now uh, our program, like on 23rd, we were supposed to land on the south pole of uh, uh, moon. But before that, you know, they they because they have a a, a, a better technology and uh, 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 heavy, you know, the, the engine which they can travel faster than what uh, 
because we do, we use the gravity gravitational pull of moon and uh, earth to send our you know the uh, uh, propulsion module to to the desired orbit uh, they did it in a very small time but i think in haste when uh, the the we uh, uh, yesterday only we have inducted you know uh, our uh, propulsion uh, sorry the vikram into our desired uh, orbit already right which in russia was slightly you know because it was all automatic system and the, there was a, some miscalculation and it was went into a wrong orbit and after that it, it was not trace out or it, it did not could be contacted and finally it crashed into the uh, you know the moon surface so look at this scenario and our achievement is is great very inspiring the time when when we started you know the russia and america was already uh, you know the hero in space science and since then our journey since 70s until date i think now we are going to be the first over uh, uh, no doubt we have learned a lot from our uh, chandrayaan 2 missions mm, uh, mm. the partial failure the this time everything is full proof it has been designed because the the this is a something unexplained uh, unexplored you know area so no it's not only the russian uh, the, this moon mission has failed but if you see the israel Japan also China also China has successfully mm, landed mm. you know on the on the other side of the moon but now the question of landing doing the soft landing on the southern part this will be creating a record it will be establishing right. the, the uh, you know the the uh, the perfection of our technology our technological excellence mm, mm. and also in terms of you know the collecting data and uh, 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 collecting more information